Hello, I'm Alexa Bigwarf with Right Published Sell, and today I'd like to walk you through how you determine the price for your book. So um, what you really want to be making sure that you're doing is thinking about a couple of different things. The first is what are other books in my genre and my category priced at? Not only on Amazon, but looking at a couple of other different places as well. So Amazon will often discount the retail price of the book. You may notice when you're on Amazon looking at books that sometimes Amazon has a price that is different than, um, than the price that the book has listed as a retail price. So let's look at some of the best sellers on Amazon and I can show you what I'm talking about here if you've never noticed this. When comparing, I would always go to look at the best selling books. So if you notice here on Amazon, it has best sellers and more. You're gonna to wanna to click on that. Of course, we're in the Kindle store right now. Um, so if you're doing Kindle, you can look at the Kindle prices. You can also look at the um, actual print bookstore and you want to make sure that you have a good idea for both usually the the books will be linked together though so if you come in through the kindle version you can see um, the pricing on here but let's just pick one that's selling well and see um, you can see the price was set by the seller so the print list Right here, it'll show you all the different prices and all the different versions that are available. So you have a hardcover at $14.50. And we'll see, right, see here the list price is $29, but Amazon has it discounted down to $14.50. Now, I'm going to answer another question about pricing right now on this because people will see their book that was originally published at $29 and freak out and say, why does Amazon have my book listed at $14.50? Well, Amazon can put your book on sale whenever they want to, and they do this based off of uh, sales numbers, algorithms, all that kind of stuff. But rest assured, as the author, they are still um, going to pay you the same royalty regardless of what they put on the price there. So if your book is set up at $29 and it's being distributed out through Ingram Spark or through Barn, um, through Baker and Taylor or another wholesaler, or even just from the Amazon store, like they will still pay you the same royalty whatsoever. When they discount a book, they discount into their own profits on the book, but I assure you they do it because they know they can generate more sales at a certain level. But you can see how it'll list all the different prices of the book, where it's selling, and this is a best reader, so, I mean a best seller, so you know people are buying it at that pr price point. So let's look at a genre um, that you might be selling a book in. Let's look at a specific genre or let's do a, a search. I'm going to go to books. If you're writing a book on um, how to save money and eat healthy, just see what comes up. Okay, so it's going to come up with all of these different books that are either sponsored or bestsellers. Usually the way they pull up is by the books that are selling the most. Um, or obviously if you're sponsored, you're going to show up at, and sponsor just means running Amazon ads to your book. Um, okay. So eat healthy, save money and be happy. Now you want to look for a book that has good reviews, lots of reviews. You can tell it's actually selling if 133 people have left copies of the reviews. Backyard farming on an acre, eat healthy, save money and live sustainably. Okay. So their paperback was set originally the list price at $20. Amazon has it discounted to $16.24. When you are setting your pricing, always go based on the list price, not Amazon's price, because um, this is going to tell you what um, the market value is basically, regardless of what Amazon is doing. So let's look down here and see. I mean, it's doing very, very well. Um, these may seem like big numbers to you, but with all the books that are out there on Amazon to be in the top 150 is excellent. <clears throat> so that's how you're kind of going to look. And I would continue to do that. So to, to, to get a good feel, you know, write down the name of the book, write down the price, um, and then click on some other books that are similar to this. Now, this is going to take us to a lot of, of, uh, sustainability and farming. So you may just want to go back to your original search 
and find other books that are in this category. So eat healthy, save money. There's no reviews on this. Um, so there's really no gauging whether or not this is a good price, good anything. Um, and for the record, this is the same thing that I do when I'm looking at covers in a genre to see what's doing well um, and see what types of covers other people have out there. But you can see the price range here on these books is anywhere, you know, between 10 and $20 on average. Okay, so that's the first part. Then I would hop over to, um, to let's look at that first book again. Or let's look, eat healthy on a budget. So this one apparently only has a Kindle version at $3.99. Uh, we don't know much about it. It only has two customer reviews. We can look down here and see that this book is not selling um, very much because it is at the 2 million rank in the Kindle store. Um, so that might not be a good one for you to use as a comparison. However, you can get some ideas for categories that it's showing up in when you're setting your own categories, budgeting, business and money. And if this one is showing up at 941 in budgeting, um, and you have a book that you do a strong launch on, you can probably easily get to the top of that chart. Anyway, that's not what we're here about. We're here about pricing. So um, so spend some time, go around and find books that you can tell people are actually buying um, that are related to your topic. Let's see if there's anything else. So $5 a meal college cookbook. So this is for a specific, specific genre but you can tell that it is selling and people are buying the book. It's got multiple formats and editions, list price $12.99, um, and you can get an idea of, of that. Now, hop over to, we'll see if this one's available on um, Barnes & Noble. I like to also look at Barnes and Noble and see what's out there. And you can see again, list price at $12.99. Barnes and Noble does the same thing. They, um, they discount, uh, according to what's selling and how things are happening to try and help you sell books basically, but you'll continue to get your regular discount. There's also other books that are related down here. So you can, and see it's, it's taking us into the genre of college cookbooks. So we might want to do a search, but you can see that the Nook book price, let's see, um, eating healthy on a budget. Oh, and you can see what they pop up as search results. The bikini body, bikini body, eat, drink, and be healthy, eat your way healthy, uh, anti-inflammatory. So those are all places. If this was your topic, eating healthy on a budget, and you could look into those books as well. But let's see what comes up here. We have real food on a real budget. And I wouldn't always pay attention to stars on um, Barnes and Noble because people tend not to, Amazon people tend to leave reviews on a lot more than other places. So um, I would just use this purely for a pricing thing. <laughs> um, Okay, so that's not really a good comparison there, but eating healthy on a dime. This one's got the paperback at $6.95. So it's pretty, it's a lot lower than other books that we've seen in here. Okay, so that is the first part of this process is just going and taking a look around, seeing what other books, if you already know books that are competitive in your genre, if you already have like um, a book that you know, say you're writing historical fiction on World War II and you you know automatically that The Nightingale was one of the biggest historical fictions about World War II ever, you can start your search by looking specifically at that book and seeing what's happening and what the pricing is and all of that stuff. But if you don't, just kind of search by what keywords people might be going for. Um, and by keywords, I always mean like if I were to go to Barnes & Noble or to Amazon or to any other bookstore to buy a specific kind of book, what would I be searching for? And that's where your keywords should start. So eating healthy on a budget, eating clean um, for less and see like what comes up. Like these are the types of things people might look for if they wanted to get a book that teaches them how to eat healthy, eat clean, and um, and not spend all kinds of money. So this one went with the for less, 
went with um, a time consideration, but it still may be a book that you would see as competitive in your field um, because it is the same type of general, you know, whole foods, whole clean, um, all that type of stuff. So it's relevant. You see, this one's listed at $19.99. Okay, so that's part one of your pricing strategy. Then part two, so, you know, we saw some as low as $7.99 and some as high as $19.99 for paperback books. The second part of the pricing strategy is to take into consideration what it, the benefit is of this book. If you're writing a book and your people who have already read your book or taken your program know, because in this particular example for it, we are looking at how to save money, right? So if you've started getting feedback from people who have read your book that say, on average, I'm saving $150 a month in my grocery bill because of what I learned in this month. That's huge. And that should be part of the consideration of the book. You are teaching them a skill that's going to save them money time and time and time again. So for me, that definitely um, leads it to sit at the top end of the spectrum of pricing in that category. So more in the, in the $16.99 to $20, $20 range. Um, but if you do that, you have to make it extraordinarily clear in your description why it's at that high level. So you should definitely make sure that people know, okay, this is going to, on average, saves people um, $150 a month in grocery bills. And when people see that, paying $18 for a book will seem minimal to them, okay? Um, but you have to make sure that that's clear and obvious. So... On the other hand, though, the, the pricing strategy and looking at how other books are selling and what's happening, if you see a lot of books that are priced at $20 and Amazon is consistently discounting them by $15 or $10 or bringing them way down, that's something to consider because they do those discounts so that they can generate more sales. Partially, it's to, you know, well, there's a lot of strategy behind it, but it, 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 it's also Amazon's kind of way of saying, you know, we're not getting the sales that we think are, are possible with this book. I've never asked anyone at Amazon. So let me clarify. That is my assumption based on looking at pricing and discounts. But, um, if sales are doing good at a high price, of course, they're going to leave it there because they make good money. If sales are not doing well at a particular price, but they want to generate money from it, it makes sense that they would discount the price just like you would with any other product that's not selling at the level you want it to. So, you know, also just keep in mind as a, as a first time author, you want to be as competitive as possible, but you don't want to discount your book to the point where people are like, this can't be a legit book because everybody else who's putting out good content on this topic is selling between $15 and $20 and this person just listed theirs for eight. It can't be that good of value. So value is really important in the pricing strategy. All right, I hope that helps you figure out. So basically to wrap it up, the things that you need to do are to go to at least two retail, major retail bookstores. Um, book sites. Amazon obviously is such a huge thing, but Barnes and Noble, or if you have a, a local indie store that you love or wherever you want to go that has an online site, go in and either look up a book that you know is a high competition um, in your particular field or a book that your book is very similar to, or start looking for keywords, start searching for books in your genre that would make sense. So, you know, um, best books on World War II or um, best books about uh, self-help, women's self-help, or best gratitude journals, or gratitude journal, or gratitude journal for women, or whatever it is you're looking for. Click around, look at the pricing, look at the discount, look at the different levels of pricing on different products um, at multiple sites. Keep a, a spreadsheet so that you can track, and I would, I would do a cross comparison of at least five other books in the genre. Um, take note of the, of the categories that they are selling in while you're doing that. That will help you as you determine your categories and then, um, factor in value and decide on that spectrum where you fall. Am I really going to be saving someone thousands of dollars in, um, therapy? Then you should be at the top end or, you know, consider it that, consider it that way. Um, on fiction books, you want to stay within genre normals always. 
So hopefully that is some information that will help you determine how to uh, price your book. I hope you like this video.